thank you for joining us today on this webinar. I am Nisha, a product marketer at SuperOps, and joining me is Akhilesh, the product manager for all things PSA in SuperOps. The agenda for this webinar is to help you set up a solid, no nonsense, continuously improving efficiency mechanism with accurate time tracking. So if you have any questions during the course of this webinar, you can ask them in uh, the Q&A box and we'll take them up at the end of the session. Now, before we uh, go into how SuperOps can help you become uh, you know, more efficient, uh, we have a poll question that we'd like to ask you. So if you could uh, answer that, it'll be great. And I can you see that on your screen? I hope you can see the poll question on your screen. So this is about, you know, how you're currently measuring uh, uh, your MSP efficiency. Is it through technician utilization reports? So the old way of, you know, measuring MSP efficiency, so we're calling it old because uh, hopefully that's about to change after this webinar, is obviously through technician utilization reports as we saw from this poll. Now, technician utilization reports are a skewed and rather incorrect way uh, of representing, you know, MSP efficiency. So why is that so? It's because first, you know, they are retrospective. Uh, you get technician utilization reports on a weekly or monthly basis, and they don't tell you how efficient you are at any given time. And also they're um, incomplete. Technician utilization doesn't take into account, you know, the nature or complexity of uh, tasks or the non billable time that uh, goes into, uh, you know, professional development, doing documentation, training, et cetera. And it also, the most important part is it doesn't take into account, you know, client efficiency, which plays a huge role in determining overall MSP efficiency. It's because, you know, you your technicians could be extremely efficient in resolving issues. They could do it really fast, but then the client could take a long time in getting back to you or, you know, fixing uh, issues from there and which could pull your overall efficiency down. And because technician utilization is retrospective and incomplete, um, can you go to the next slide, Akilesh? Thank you. So the decisions ba uh, made based on technician utilization uh, reports do not improve MSP efficiency by much because you know they aren't a true measure of M MSP efficiency in the first place. So even the marginal increase they may produce in that case isn't sustainable since they are retrospective. So what's the new super ops way of uh, improving, uh, measuring and improving operational efficiency? The answer is super ops smart tracker, which gives you an accurate real-time complexity-based ticket independent way to greater efficiency. So how does the feedback loop with Smart Tracker work? It all starts with accurate time tracking. With Smart Tracker, technicians can track time from anywhere, whether they're on site visits or you know working or reading up documentation outside of the PSA RMM platform. And all they have to do is add a simple note. They have to, they don't have to associate a ticket or create a ticket or anything when they start tracking time. So the time tracking is completely frictionless. And because of that, technicians uh, do not have to miss tracking even a single billable or non-billable minute. And they don't have to ballpark time either and leave money on the table. So when technicians track time accurately, managers can see what technicians are working on in real time and the time they spend uh, and the time that they're spending on the particular task. So if managers see that, you know, technicians are exceeding the time that they uh, are spending on a task that normally isn't supposed to take that much time, they can step in and offer assistance. So this leads to faster issue resolution, resulting in higher technician efficiency. And this process is iterative. Through accurate time tracking and proactive intervention, MSPs can uh, effectively bring down the resolution time baselines, becoming more and more efficient. And on the other side of uh, technician efficiency is client efficiency, which can also be achieved through precise uh, time tracking and management. So Smart Tracker gives you, uh, you know, accurate time usage uh, analysis based on uh, for any client based on the ticket category. So, for example, for a certain category like, uh, uh, say, printer issues, how much time has this client been utilizing over a period of time? They can then compare this with uh, this client's environment with you know another client who is more efficient in these type of issues like who uh, takes up lesser time from uh, the MSP for these issues so they can proactively uh, they can take proactive steps to make that client more efficient such as by you know probably by upgrading uh, their systems or doing some maintenance activity so doing all this for clients again brings down uh, the MSP uh, resolution time baselines resulting in improved overall efficiency 
So the overarching outcome is a self-sustaining, continuously improving efficiency mechanism, which starts with something as simple as accurate time tracking. So this is the profitability snowball effect. So how does you know accurate time tracking translate to efficiency, which then translates to higher profitability? So with better time management, you get more billable hours per uh, technician. Since you know your technicians and clients are a lot more efficient with uh, better time management, they get more billable hours per tech. So the more billable hours per tech then translates to you know more revenue per client. And with this increased revenue, the MSP can hire more techs and get more clients. You know, just grow their business, which again uh, leads to you know like the more the extra clients and techs again improve the last for the MSP and this process keeps compounding resulting in higher profitability. Okay, so um, Achilles, you can go to the demo maybe and show the magic. Perfect. Thank you so much, uh, Nisha, on sharing all that. And um, um, definitely, Nisha uh, has laid uh, the ground on, uh, laid a foundation on what we are solving for. And maybe I just wanted to share some thought process on why we even built a smart tracker and um, something that you don't see in many of the tools out there or any of the tools out there and why we went ahead and did this uh, is because one of the primary goal of super ops is enabling every MSP owner and executive leader in an MSP to take decisions for growth and also become the productivity tool of choice for technicians. And uh, <clears throat> when I say that, that means I just can't build a tool and say, this is what an MSP has to use, but we have to be a partner in your growth um, story. And one of the fundamental things when I went and spoke to many MSPs on understanding how are you thinking of growth? Uh, how are you thinking of profitability, uh, improving your bottom line, et cetera? So the, there are three kinds of efficiency predominantly comes in, uh, right? That is your cost efficiency, your operational efficiency, and also maybe your customer efficiency. For example, cost efficiency could be how much um, um, a cost you're cutting down. One of the things the way SuperOps achieves that outcome for MSPs is bringing multiple tools in one single unified platform rather than using five to six different tools and how you can cut down cost and become efficient in using one single platform. And uh, there are other ways of doing the cost efficiency part as well. And the moment you decide to go ahead and scale, uh, become an MSP to hit one mil and uh, beyond, and you are an MSP with a target in mind saying that I want to grow to a particular revenue by the end of this year or the next year, et cetera, then what you start also looking at is cost efficiency and also that is led by operational efficiency. Now, Nisha did mention um, that our MSP is tracking operational efficiency today. Definitely, yes. Uh, but however, we felt that it was broken. Um, our MSP is able to truly take decisions for growth uh, from the reports that they have. Tons of reports that is just there. Um, not really is what we heard from MSPs. Because the fundamental part of how you track efficiency was where um, the money was. Because we just realized people the reports would be useful and people can take decisions out of those reports as long as you have tracked the efficiency perfectly. Um, if everybody has ballpark time, how good is your profitability and utilization reports? Uh, because that's not really showing the accurate uh, utilization and your efficiency as an MSP. So that's how we realized, fine, this is a problem that's something that we should definitely solve for MSPs so that we can aid every MSP out there to take decisions for their growth by improving their operational efficiency. Now, one of the fundamental things then we realized if we have to fix data, then we have to fix tracking. Uh, how can we fix tracking? Uh, and what were the problems? We had problems about uh, forgetting to track time, uh, forgetting to go ahead and, and uh, you, you know, mention how what time exactly took and so rather, rather than ballparking time etc. So these are all the things that was happening from a technician standpoint when we found as a technician, hey, how can I help you improve your productivity and also help track time? They said tracking time is super frictionless, right? Uh, let's say so most of the times I'm, I'm working on a particular ticket and suddenly somebody pulls me into an urgent problem and I have a call and immediately I'm getting onto the particular asset and I'm starting to troubleshoot, etc. Or most of the times, maybe I'm actually on Google doing some research because I got pulled into um, a particular issue and I'm, I'm, I'm actually doing some research on, on the web for a particular customer's issue. Or let's say I'm on site for a particular um, uh, issue, but issue A, but I got pulled into issue B as well, uh, but there was no record of it. And every time I have to track a time, every PSA demands them to go ahead and create a ticket, choose a form, fill so many fields, et cetera, and then say, yes, 
I have to start tracking ticket for this particular issue, and which is the friction, which is why time tracking does not happen in real time. Rather, it becomes a retrospective exercise leading to ball parking and sometimes even missed revenue because I forgot to track time. In SuperOps, the way we innovated this and solved for this problem is making sure that not only you can start tracking time from a ticket, but let's say I got pulled into um, an immediate issue from an, um, a customer and I'm directly jumping in because I, my customer's happiness is super important. I started looking into the asset, started troubleshooting it, etc. All I have to do is just go is the widget in SuperOps is ever there. It follows where you go. So I can go ahead and start saying that, okay, I'm, server, I'm doing a server, um, let's say, uh, troubleshooting for Winterfell. And that's about it. I can start tracking time, be on the call with customer. So you don't really worry about going through a process of creating tickets and all of that, but just start recording time. That's the most important thing that you have to do. And, and in terms of, let's say, I, I'm, I'm doing this now. I got pulled into a particular research for another customer or any other scenario. And even if I'm not inside super ops, let's say when I'm Google, uh, AD, troubleshooting things, we have launched a Chrome extension, as you can see on the screen, and you can see the time that I actually started, um, all right? It's completely in sync with my PSA, and uh, I can clearly see that, oh, I was actually working on this, but I, I'm not doing the research for this particular issue. Maybe I can go ahead and start another research work for, let's say, Acme on uh, what all the issue is, and I can hit start tracking time, and I don't need to be uh, there in the PSA or the RMM at all to start tracking time. And in the case of, Let's say um, if I'm not going to be there um, or near the computer at all, and I'm on site, I'm fixing some network cable issue, et cetera, but I got pulled into five other things because we heard a lot of technicians say only when a client see our face, they remember a lot of problems. So in these cases, we didn't want technicians to be burdened about creating tickets for everything and forgetting to track time, friction, et cetera. We have also launched a very nice mobile widget, which can reside in your home screen. Maybe I would suggest all of you to go ahead and try out our mobile app uh, download it and add a widget to your home screen for our time tracking, which is going to look very similar to this. And wherever I am, I'm just going to start tracking time within a click. That is the first thing that we meant, we made sure that it happens in super ops for a technician. So this way, there is no friction. I can go ahead and start tracking time throughout the day for whichever work I'm pulled into because we understand a technician's time is super busy. Right. Similarly, what happens for all this time that was tracked? Um, as a technician, of course, I have to log this because uh, all this. Work... Sorry to interrupt, but I think this calls for a poll. You know, I just really want to know what are uh, you know attendees think of this feature. Yeah, so, absolutely. if I may, can I? Yeah, yeah. Please yeah. go ahead. Thank you. Uh, okay, launching the poll here. I hope you can see the poll on your screen. So, I'd really like to know what you think about this feature. You know, this frictionless time tracking. Do you think it'll make accurate time tracking much easier for you. Awesome, yes. Yes, it can eventually be associated to a ticket. Akilesh will uh, talk about that in a bit. Awesome, almost 95% of our attendees find this feature super useful, which is great to know. Thank you, thank you so much for the validation. All right, Akilesh, please go ahead. Awesome. Thank you uh, so much, folks. And that's what how we made time tracking is super easy. And now, of course, thanks for that question as well. All of you are thinking in the right direction. Um, of course, you have to associate these to a ticket or create a ticket, uh, et cetera, for all the time you tracked. That's why we have a very nice timesheet in SuperOps. And as a technician, I can come to my timesheet and I can go into uh, all the time that I have tracked. And you can see the time that's already running as well and what are all the time that I have tracked throughout the day. So this is the screen that's more like a daily activity, right? At the end of the day, as a technician, I can just go ahead and come here, see all the time that's tracked. Even if I had tracked time on a ticket, it's going to come in. So for example, let's say um, if I had tracked time right from a ticket, um, I'm just going to track this particular time and right from um, inside a ticket, you would be able to see um, on the timesheets, any time that I tracked, now this is with a ticket and um, I, I'm seeing that you are I'm able to track time there. Or is, if there are time entries where I have tracked, but I have to associate the ticket later. 
That's exactly what we wanted to do. We wanted to fr remove friction at the start of tracking time. And then now let's say I was doing a research for Acme and I didn't have uh, any ticket for that. I can just go ahead and create a ticket. And when you create a ticket, as you can see, the time is um, automatically associated while you're creating the ticket and it's going to be associated. So I can choose Acme as the client and tell uh, what is the research that I was working on, um, um, et cetera. So I can do um, all of that and hit save. And this uh, timer will be part of that ticket in itself. Or similarly, I can go ahead and say, if there was already a ticket that's there, let's say for server, and I just know, but I couldn't immediately get to the ticket. That's why I track time. So I can even associate a time to um, a particular ticket as well. So once you go ahead and do that, you can submit these as work logs. You can either do it as, let's say at the end of your day, as a technician, review all the time you have tracked and just do a bulk add work log to all the necessary tickets or even projects, right? Whatever you can, because Suprops is a unified platform where you can work across projects and tickets. Now, uh, once you submit these as work logs, uh, what you would be able to do as a technician is not only just submit these, but also keep a track of how much time I have logged, uh, let's say for this week. Now, this is my timesheet, how this is looking for this week. And I can keep a complete tab of what's going on, how much time I have logged for the week. It's 14 hours. Ideally, I should be logging close to 30 hours a week. What have I missed? Have I logged all the work, et cetera? I have a very nice um, calendar view as a technician where I can always look into, um, let's say, all the time that was tracked. And I suddenly realize, saying that I'm pretty sure that I was on site for two events because it's already my super ops because it's already synced with my calendar and scheduling, et cetera. Uh, the timesheet is already telling me saying that you, you are actually having two events on that day, which is from your calendar. So, and I also know I was on on-site visit for two of these meetings and fire doesn't seem right because I know that I pulled off an eight hour day that day. So all I could do is go ahead and look into that particular day wherever I found out outliers, and I can see where and all I have track time. And if I find saying, yes, two to three, I was actually doing this work and I've totally forgot to track time, go ahead and add that. So this calendar view will help you jog your memory as a technician so that you never miss out on uh, work time. And also, let's say you were on-site for a particular visit. Uh, this is like an on-site visit from your calendar, and you never logged a corresponding time for that because SuperOps is kind of showing you, saying that, hey, it looks like you were on-site, but there is no corresponding time for that. I can just convert that into a work log right from my calendar itself, um, uh, right? So I can say network troubleshooting, and I totally forgot to track time, and that's about it. And that's how efficient we have made sure that time tracking is not only easy, but technicians have, are empowered enough to make sure this is as accurate as possible. So they have a nice timesheet view to ensure that their business gets a complete view of all the time that was worked on and most accurately as possible without loss of revenue as well. So that is how we have made the technician's life easy, right? Now, I'm going to move on to the managers or the service um, leaders in your organization, um, et cetera, on how you can go ahead and manage your team. Uh, how do you know if your technicians are working on efficiently? Uh, how do you know someone's not stuck in a particular issue for the last two hours, et cetera? Now, one of the things that we asked uh, when managers and owners saying, how do you know your technicians are really um, efficient, uh, efficient? They said, yeah, we have reports. We pull them out at the end of a quarter or end of a month and then realize that somebody spent actually more than two hours on a simple server reboot that shouldn't have happened. But that re that's retrospective. You've lost already money by putting in that time for such a simple issue. That is why for the managers and the owners, we have introduced something called the all time sheets, which is where you can manage everything in real time. Now in real time, I know who's working on what, what is the issue that they are working on and for how long and how many tickets, how many people have still not logged their work so that you can go ahead and say, hey, I still see time hanging from yesterday, et cetera. Please go ahead and log your work, which should be ideally done at the end of every day from the timesheets. Or similarly, if someone is working on something for the last, let's say, uh, four minutes or four hours, et cetera, why is somebody working on a simple email troubleshooting issue for more than, let's say, this much particular time? Maybe I should help this technician or ask them to leave this ticket and immediately escalate because technician's time is money in an MSP. So rather than finding all this data at a month end or a quarter end and you taking a decision saying, oh, uh, my technician shouldn't have spent this much time on this particular ticket and see what you can do, this is like the first time we have introduced in the PSA where you will be able to see real-time view of who's doing what, what are they up to, why they are working for such a long time, and immediately take action. And most of the time, you would be able to catch inefficiencies right then and there, right? So that's one way of going about it. Now, 
Um, also, what about the time logged? I can also have a nice weekly view. Say, so how is this? Um, Akhilesh, yeah, sorry to interrupt you once again, but I think uh, you know the real time visibility into what a technician is working on is one of our huge value props. So I, again, once again, like to know what what our um, audience you know thinks about that. So can I pull up another poll? Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. Yeah. All right. Uh, here we go. Awesome. So over 90% have uh, said they find value in it, which is great. Thank you. Thank you once again. Perfect. Awesome. Yeah. I'm really glad to hear that. And uh, definitely, hopefully, everyone can go try um, this particular feature if you're not already using um, in, in, in your SuperOps account, if you're already our customers. And uh, if you're seeing this for the first time, um, go ahead and try it out and let us know what you think hands-on, with a hands-on approach. And one of the things that you'll also be able to see is um, uh, from a work log standpoint, I would be also able to see what's my utilization like for the week? How is it going in real time? How can I make sure uh, an operations standpoint, this week doesn't have bottlenecks, et cetera. So I'll be able to see is everyone logging, let's say their times on a daily basis, which client is actually taking up so much time? Why did uh, one of my lowest playing client take so much time on this uh, for this particular week? What's going on? So I can even look into those time entries and you would be able to even see what was the actual recorded time and how much billable time if you're rounding off, et cetera, because your efficiency is how much actually the time you took, not based on what you build. So you'd be able to see that. And also you'd be able to see that if the time was tracked, uh, let's say using the timer, which is automatic, or was this a manual uh, entry? So you will know what is really accurate, what is not, and et cetera. So as a manager, you have all this view to understand how's my operations going on? How is this week going? Um, and, and are there any bottlenecks? Are there anything that requires my immediate attention? And for most likely, one of the things that you will realize is why is my one of my top paid technician already putting in so much time by the third day into the week? Or why is this client taking so much time already uh, this week? What's going on? Um, et cetera, uh, you would be able to see all of that in one single, um, uh, well, let's say timesheet view that you are getting. So that is what we wanted to give for a technician where track time very easily, use timesheets to go ahead and log your time and keep a track of making sure that you have logged all this time and, and you have a way of verifying them as well. Now, as managers, you have a real time view where you can take decisions in real time to up, 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 like you know optimize for efficiencies and also keep a track of how your week is progressing to find operational bottlenecks and clear out uh, inconsistencies that you see. So this is an overall view of what we do with Smart Tracker on time tracking and timesheets. But now the goal of this was not just this, right? And the goal was also to take decisions for growth. All this is happening in real time, which is great. But Nisha spoke about a feedback loop right? Despite me doing all that, what are all the decisions that I have to take today as an MSP to improve my operational efficiency, right? So that is where our utilization and efficiency metrics comes in. And um, we have launched a report along with Smart Tracker, where I can choose, let's say, a time frame. I'm just going to say last six months. I just want to understand how was work done? How was my resource utilized? So I'll be able to clearly say how much time was spent across clients, across how many tickets, and does that make sense, et cetera. Or I can actually see for all the clients as well. We are showing the top 20, uh, but you'll be able to see for um, all the clients. That is one part of it. But however, the true efficiency analysis happens with SuperOps where as a business, we would have analyzed what is your average resolution time and what is your average time spent on tickets and across different categories as well, which we'll show later. But we will have your business baseline metrics. And why this is so important is as you bring the average spent time, time spent and the resolution time, let's say lower and lower, and when you bring this baseline metric down, that means as a business, you have business, you have saved time. You have more hours to sell with the same cost. So with the same technicians, now you have more hours so that you can hire, you can go ahead and onboard another client, helping you be more profitable and grow, et cetera. So the goal is to bring these baselines down so that with the same amount of hours your technicians can put, how much can you get done? So that's why we are providing you a client efficiency ranking based on your company metrics and a baseline metrics. So we'd be able to show you, hey, who are your top 10 clients? Who are your bottom 10 clients? Of course, you can see for a complete client ranking as well. But ideally, what you're looking for is go to your bottom 10 clients and identify why is these clients not really so efficient? Why are they taking so much time? If I have to look into a view insight, immediately SuperOps is going to give me a great insight saying, 
whenever they raise a password issue or let's say monitoring issue all of that seems fine because actually you are doing fine there but however whenever they raise a network issue or onboarding issue in general comparing to your other clients these um, uh, you know this particular client is making you take longer time in terms of how much time was logged that is a work log log and how much time it took to resolve these uh, issues as well right so this is why this client is not efficient because they are taking too much time for the same issues which actually are solving faster in most of the cases, in 100% of the cases for all the clients. That is really alarming. So when you know this, all you have to do is just drill down to only those tickets that are outliers and understand why did this happen? Why is onboarding taking so much time for only this client compared to my other clients? And what can I do? And from this, you'd be able to create a decision saying, maybe this client needs more education to bring this uh, time down. Or maybe you can build a better standard operating procedure with our runbooks to make sure that the technicians are actually not spending so much time in doing this onboarding, but we can automate processes here. So one of the things, the, the major thing that's happening in the space is currently MSPs are shopping AI tools, uh, uh, automation tools, et cetera, to improve, improve uh, let's say, operational efficiency. But what MSPs, when we speak to them, lack is that's great. You can buy so many tools or understand, or realize how you can use the PSA RMM to automate itself. But what to automate? What, what should you do to improve your efficiency is the question that every MSP has. And this is the report for them. So all you have to do is just view the insights in this report, understand who your clients are not that are inefficient. If so, which category is pulling you down? And what automations can you put in or what client education can you do so that you as a company can bring your overall baseline metrics on time spent and the resolution time down. And also when you make these changes, you can also see of the trend, hey, I actually rolled out a standard operating procedure or I actually go ahead, went ahead and had an education session with the client. Is the resolution time coming down at all? Uh, are the changes uh, impacting at all? So you can take all these decisions and you can track all of this in such a way so that once you start bringing these baseline down, that's the best part. Your EBITDA and your profitability is already grown. And that's how we are enabling every MSP to grow by making decisions based on efficiency. So that's like what we wanted to share um, in terms of uh, the smart tracker, the time tracking, et cetera. And maybe we should have, Nisha, um, um, do we have a poll for this report that they find useful at all? Of course, Akilesh. That's awesome. Uh, I'm so glad everyone finds value in this. And then there is a question on um, also excluding uh, a particular client from their uh, baseline metrics. And, and I think that's a very fair question. At the moment, uh, we calculate for all, all the clients, uh, basically. But however, we are running some announcements because I, I'm assuming it could be the case because you just have an internal client or break-fix clients where you don't want to really affect uh, the baseline metrics based on that. That is something definitely in the cards. Uh, in the cards. Currently, the baseline is based on the type of ticket that you're working on and the category of ticket you're working on and how long you're kind of taking across every client. And that's how you are running um, efficiency based on that and, and optimizing uh, optimizing your decisions for those categories. Uh, that's how we have optimized it. But however, as next steps, uh, we are also looking to um, not just go ahead and, and uh, help you make decisions only in these efficiency dashboards, but two things, how which clients are utilized in this uh, data. That's one thing that we are looking for. And the next thing is you will see a lot of AI coming on top of this. For example, let's say you had uh, uh, 15 tickets on onboarding issues saying that this is where you pulled your efficiency. How quickly AI can help you analyze all that and say, where was the efficiency drain? Or uh, should I be looking at um, uh, the timesheets all the time and all the all timers all the time? Or can can I know when there is an efficiency drop? So all of this, we are going to power up uh, with AI as the next uh, couple of things in the, uh, in the couple of months itself, where once you start all using all this, we would be able to analyze crunch data and make it better with one, the reports and also AI on top of this. And that's the vision for Smart Tracker. And um, if I have to summarize all of this in one single go, uh, if you have to improve your operational efficiency, as an MSP, there are three main steps. One is we have to make sure our tracking is on point. That is how our smart tracker comes in, where how we have made sure we have tracking is super easy, frictionless, et cetera. Next is you have to analyze and understand how all of this work is going on and, and how you have to take real-time decisions, which is where our timesheets come in. And three is you have to start optimizing your resource utilization 
and also taking decisions for efficiency on how to, what decisions should I make to automate and educate, et cetera, to increase optimization. That is what our, um, our reports is going to help you with. On top of that, when you have to plan your work based on all of this, that's when we also have a very nice way to manage your work where you have a nice calendar where you can manage, plan your work, track your work, analyze and optimize. And that's the feedback loop that we have enabled as a unique uh, journey in SuperOps. So any MSP, if you're wishing to grow and you want to improve your cost and operational efficiency so that you want to increase profitability, we want to be your partner and SuperOps will be a partner and not just a tool with set of features. So that's how we wanted to, I wanted to wrap up, uh, wrap up uh, for the webinar. And uh, I'm happy to take any more uh, questions as well uh, if you have for the next couple of minutes. Uh, I, I think maybe I'll start taking um, questions uh, live. Uh, there are questions on, is this particular dashboard available to us? Um, uh, yes, this should be available to you if you're on the super plan. So the timesheets and the efficiency report is available for all our customers on the super plan. And if you're one of them, definitely you should be able to find that. And I'm also going to uh, look into other questions if there are any. Yeah, we saved the questions for the end, but I think Hari, who's our customer success manager, by the way, has uh, been answering them as they uh, come. So, yeah. Yeah. And then there's also a question on dispatch on how you can plan work, the calendar view that I showed on, uh, do we have a Google calendar as well? At the moment, of course, we integrate with uh, Outlook, but Google Calendar is something that we are uh, actively uh, tracking and looking to pick uh, down the line this year. Perfect. Uh, if there are any other questions, please feel free to post it. And if not, um, we would love for you to go ahead and try what we showed today and uh, share your feedback on if you are able to actually take real-time decisions and take decisions for your growth. And uh, do share uh, other feedbacks on how we can improve this as well, because we have a lot of things and AI uh, coming on top of whatever I showed very soon. And that's going to be a separate webinar in itself. Awesome. Thank you for that, Akhilesh. So uh, I think that's a wrap. And after the webinar ends, uh, you know, we are also sending a survey along your way, asking if you'd be interested in using SmartRaka after this session, which I surely hope you would be. So please drop your answers for that. And thank you. Thank you all for joining us. And uh, I hope you found the session valuable. Thank you. Have a great day.